this is going to be the first video I've done uh, for the most part without reading uh, from the books that God dictated to me. I've mentioned many times Isaiah 53 and the day of the Lord, which has about 50 chapters. So it's not all Isaiah 53 by, by any means, but uh, and the other is the life of the righteous of God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53, which of course is my life. Every word, every sentence, every paragraph uh, commanded and directed by God that I write it. There's none of this material is mine. Um, I am a man in divine beings. That's what the man of Isaiah 11 is. Now, all this knowledge is not coming from Keith McCarty. They have given it to me. And they control what I say. They even control what I think. I'm just... Um, there's all kinds of ways to say this. You know, I've lived with them now for 13 years. And it's just taken that much time, really, uh, for him to prepare me. That, to break my will, to... To know that uh, I don't have free will, that I am completely and totally in His power, and I and physically also, I, everything I cannot do anything of my own. Period. Uh, now, all this material, the two books and the videos, which are each of the chapters. There's about forty, fifty videos that that cover what's in the chapters. It's better to read the books if you ask me. But um, they talk to me throughout this, uh, uh, these videos, uh, directing where I go and say, and I don't, they, they give me a few ideas about what we're going to do uh, in this video. I don't really know. I just got a little brief outline. Um, sometimes I stop to listen to him, sometimes I don't. Sometimes he just puts knowledge into my mind. It's things I've learned before that I don't really remember anymore. And that's something I'm going to be getting into. How they, how they control my mind, how all that works. There's some information on it already on video and in the books. But it's really hard to explain. And the reason for it is, I am indeed Elijah. And that has to do with them controlling my mind, being the information of my mind, uh, which we're going to also point out um, how they've proven that to me. They're always proving it to me and showing me things. They're still doing it, doing it yesterday, doing it today, this morning. Uh, it's just, you know, a lot of it's repetition. Um, but, you know, I, I wasn't, this isn't something anybody's prepared for, much less me. I mean, maybe um, Hollywood actors are, uh, people who like to talk to crowds and things like that, um, had a rough, rough childhood, had uh, plenty of esteem issues, uh, didn't like confrontation because I'd get too angry and quit and he had to take that from me and of course he has but it's all been a very long process and to me we're kind of bogged down because we've done all this and done the books that's the prophet like Moses Elijah I'm about to get into and the reason I mentioned the mind and controlling it when you're in heaven Jewish people and only Jewish people God makes that clear in the scripture Gentiles do not go to the heaven God is creating for the Jewish people. If they want to go to that heaven, they're going to have to convert to Judaism, to being a Jew, since it's both. It's a people and a religion. That's the only way they go to heaven. God doesn't have anything to do with worshipers of a false idol and a false god. And he brings vindication against them primarily because they say, they say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob left them 
and came to the Gentile. That the, because the sacrifice by Jesus the Jew would have been for the Jewish people. And uh, that, that, that'll be a whole other subject. That gets into Paul, Apostle Paul. And I have uh, a, a video or two on that. Verses, it's Romans verses 7 through 10. And if you haven't seen that video, of every video I have, that's the one to, to watch. It's my favorite. Uh, I wasn't using the books God dictated to me. Uh, it's the only time that's happened. I just had the New Testament. Uh, the uh, It's called the Letter to the Romans, I think it is. And it's written by Paul. I'm not going to get into it. But it's, it's just, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. That's the best way. And entertained. It's very good. Um, but again, kind of bogged down because, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready to get out there and I've offered all this proof. My knowledge surpasses any rabbi out there by far because I had instant answers from God himself. Now, I can't sit here and just feel like the biggest, smartest guy, and I know it all, I know it all, but I'm comfortable enough to just sit down and know any question put to me, he'll have me prepared for because he's proven to me. He knows what anybody's going to say to me before they say it. So I'm always prepared. But I still have to be myself, I, I, and, I, and I am. And I, I wasn't a perfect speaker by any stretch. I was a lawyer, but primarily a book lawyer. Although I did, um, I tried cases and I had to deal with clients. And uh, But primarily, uh, I researched records uh, for oil companies, starting back in the 1800s, and bringing current land and the people that owned it, which meant I got real familiar with uh, wills and... Uh, uh, preparing uh, ancestral trees and charts of ancestry, uh, looking for defects in title to make sure the old companies had the right people leased. And there's a fair amount of that uh, in one chapter of the life of the righteous servant. But there's another proof. There's another proof beyond all this knowledge and the fact that I fit every verse of Isaiah 53 the only person who's ever discovered that Ezekiel went through the same process. Why those words? Punishment, chastisement, bruising, crushing, wounding, and there's another one. What that's all about. And of course, there's a whole lot behind why God did it that way. Why it's so complicated. How can... The Christians firmly believe that it describes Jesus Christ. When there's so much in it that says it cannot be. Whoever this man is, you cannot offer him for sacrifice. He will not be accepted by God. He's, he's a, a man of suffering familiar with disease. Verse 10, God chose to crush him with disease. That if he would offer himself for guilt, and that's, there's plenty on that in the books and other videos, what that means. It doesn't mean guilt offering, contrary to Toby a Singer uh, of Outreach Judaism, which has got the most ludicrous, ludicrous argument for why Israel is in Isaiah 50, it's, uh, the people of Israel, the Jewish people, are the righteous servant of God. You know, he only uses that term one time, and that's when he's describing what the sages knew to be correct. He had to have a description of a man to come. You can't just say he's coming. You've got to have a description. And they called him the leper scholar. Why? He's diseased, and yet he's a very intelligent man. That's me. With all the uh, accounts of cancer that I've given plenty of times before, the fact that I've been given a long life when I was told I'd be dead 20 years ago. And it was never treated. And uh, we just started putting this in some of the videos. But uh, uh, for the first time I went and saw a doctor here recently, just for a minor checkup. 
you know, blood pressure, those kind of things, not for any kind of ailment. I wasn't sick. And uh, they took some chest x-rays, and it surprised me. I mean, I kind of just figured he didn't let the cancer grow. And I've talked about this in more detail, plenty of places, but there's, there's no cancer in my lungs. He literally took it away. Now, my witness is 93 years old, my father, uh, who, who also saw the pictures. And it was two different, it was, uh, we, we looked at a set and they said, well, let's run them again. And three days later, me and my dad are back with the doctor. And uh, he says, yeah, it's cancer and there's no change in, in what I told you. Which was, because I said, well, what does all this mean you're not going to treat it? He says, well, you're getting ready to die. And that's just how he said it to me. You're getting ready to die. So, I said, hmm. so uh, but I never had any symptoms. I eventually became a triathlete. And my first triathlon was a half Ironman which took me about eight hours. Uh, my book also has an account of that. Everything in the book is backing up the verses. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to read the first seven chapters and, and to, to understand who I was, a person who would get very angry and came from a dysfunctional family. And there was trauma in my family, uh, suicides. My mother lost her grandfather, then her mother, then her father, and then adopted by her father's brother, him. And it's pretty graphic. But then in, in chapter 7, God speaks to me, and it's just how it happened. And then the next seven chapters uh, are my initial living with God up to the, uh, well, up to this point. <coughs> um, but here's another proof. And I don't know how that, I, I, I can't speak or read Hebrew. They say it's easy to learn. Well, we've worked on it a few times. i got plenty of books on it. But God keeps saying it's best you just learn in Jerusalem, uh, Israel, uh, just because you'll be exposed to it every day and have to figure it out, and that makes you retain it. Um, but I wanted to point this out, and I'm always talking about the Jewish Publication Society's book, how it was started from scratch in 56, and uh, they spent 30 years on it. And they didn't base it on anything somebody had done before. Um, God tells me it's the best translation out there, bar none. But there are footnotes on every single page. Every single page of the Tanakh. Inundation yields. Uh, Hebrew uncertain. Uh, you know, basically saying, well, it... it it looks like what was over here in this other book, but it's a totally different context. We're not sure. Uh, uncertain. This and that. I'm going to read a few of them. I'm going to read uh, from a preface of the book about these footnotes. Uh, it's a little bit long, but uh, you can fast forward if you don't want to listen to it, but you'll get the idea pretty quick. It is a preface. In preparing the translation of the prophets, which is what I'm primarily interested in, I'm not, I'm not interested in the Torah. Uh, I, you know, follow God's laws, and everybody should. But I'm God's servant. I, I'm not a religious person. I cannot, I, mean, I was an atheist until he spoke to me um, for 50 years. Although he came to me at birth, and he's proven that to me. And I can always, there, there's some of that in the book, but not that much. Um, there's just so many ways he's done it. If you can imagine 13 years with God constantly breaking you down, and at the same time teaching you. Um, it, it's been an amazing journey. And there'll be more to it, I'm sure. But let me read this. In preparing the translation of the prophets... The translators faced a recurring problem that deserves special mention. The prophetic books contain many passages whose meaning is uncertain. Thus, in order to provide an intelligible rendering, modern scholars have resorted to amending the Hebrew text. They're changing the Hebrew. Some of these 
inundations derived from the ancient translators, especially of the Septuagint and the Targums, who had before them a Hebrew text that sometimes differed from today's traditional text, which would be the Leningrad Codex, I believe. Where these ancient versions provide no help, some scholars have made conjectural emendations of their own. Many modern English versions contain translations of amended texts, sometimes without citing any departure from the traditional Hebrew text, although they had done just that. And if you think this is bad with the Hebrew, you ought to see what the Christians have done with how they change uh, the way things read over and over again, getting it closer and closer to somehow matching an argument that uh, Jesus is the Messiah. It's amazing. It's amazing what they do. Like the translation of the Torah, and see there's a discussion like this about the Torah itself in the earlier part of the preface. Like the translation of the Torah, the present translation of the prophetic books adheres strictly to the traditional Hebrew text. That's their, they didn't use anything that had been prepared before. Um, it's like I said, you know, it's so important to know that Isaiah 53 starts in Isaiah 52, verses 13 through 15. But I haven't seen anything out there, nothing used by... Um, Jews for Judaism, Shabbat, uh, what was used by uh, Rashi in all of his commentary. They're in quotes. They go together. There's a demarcation there. That's kind of how you know this is the beginning of the righteous servant, the leper scholar, according to the sages. Okay, and then it starts up. 15 ends that chapter. You come to Isaiah 53, and there's quotes again, the first six verses. Are, are in one quote. Starts with verse 1, ends with verse 6. And it's important because it's a story. All these people are saying we're sick because we're unrighteous. We have guilt and God put it on him. And this and that and that and this. That's, that's the witnesses of the righteous servant. And what? who is he? He's this lowly man that's gone through hell in life. He's disfigured. God uses affliction by itself, but he says he's familiar with disease. Usually you think of affliction and he's crushed with disease. Usually you think of affliction as, as being of a disease, afflicted with some kind of uh, disease, sickness. But he, he keeps it separate. Well, an affliction also has always been thought of as disfigurement at birth, as though God did not like. And of course, I, I was disfigured at birth, and God tells me, I'm behind that too. I'm behind your cancer. I'm behind your disfigurement. I've been with you your entire life through my day, my day of vindication and redemption of my people in the eyes of the world. I knew you before you were born, he'd say. And I knew what I was going to do with you, and I knew, what you, I knew the problems you would have. And I knew it was going to take to knock it out of me. I knew how hard-headed you were going to be. And on and on and on. And it's been one hell of a battle. <laughs> I always lose, by the way. <laughs> I don't fight quite as quick anymore. And that's just the process. I, I call it God's boot camp. Uh, torment and torture. Heinous, heinous acts of cruelty and violence. Wounding, remember, wounding's in there. Well, he made sure I got wounded before he spoke to me. And in these 13 years, he's wounded me more. Except this time, in his power. His power envelops me. It goes through me. But all of this is in other videos. Let me finish with this, uh, this next, uh, an additional proof in the future. I got to start over. Like the translation of the Torah, the present translation of the prophetic books 
adhere strictly to the traditional Hebrew text, they're talking about this text. But where the text remains obscure and an alteration provides marked clarifications, a footnote is offered. With a rendering of the suggested inundation. If you pick up this tonight, <laughs> you can't, you just about can't open it up and not see one, two, three, fifteen, I don't know about fifteen, um, of footnotes on just about every single page. In other words, there's still so much that is not understood of the original Hebrew language from the Hebrew text that they cannot figure out. They say, well, this is the best we can figure. Uh, and I, I've already mentioned some of it, but if the inundation is based on one or two ancient versions, they are mentioned by name. If more than two versions agree, they are summed up as ancient versions. Conjectural inundations are introduced by, and this is in quotes, inundation yields. Sometimes, however, it was deemed sufficient to offer only a change of vowels, and some modifications are indicated by change of vocalization yields. In all cases, the inundation is given in a footnote, which may be readily disregarded by those who reject it on either scholarly or religious grounds. The only exceptions involve such changes in grammatical form as though those say from a second person to third or from a singular to plural. In such rare instances, the change is incorporated in the text and the traditional Hebrew is translated in the footnote. And then it goes in, starts talking about the writings. God can straighten that out. He can tell you, yeah, he, had, he had the Hebrew language written, created, however you want to look at it. Now, I don't know how he did it, I don't know how detailed he'd be. But, and, and this goes back to the information of my mind. As I said, I don't speak Hebrew. I don't read Hebrew. Um, and yet, if a learned man of uh, the Hebrew Bible, or a rabbi, a teacher, a scholar, uh, a linguistics person, anything, they can ask me any question they want to, and I can answer it on the spot. Or he's going to have me write something. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how to. He never tells me really what's going on. Almost even in a daily basis, you know, he decides everything I do. But but he wouldn't be putting in on this video if he wasn't going to do something. So that'll be another proof. How on earth can this guy know that? Well, it could. And I had the knowledge of Elijah on heaven, which was just now getting ready to get into, <clears throat> which is fascinating. Um. I lost my train of thought. See, sometimes they do that. Just they, this still embarrass me, you know. This still working on me. They say it will never end. If you wonder why I look over here, you know how it is said Moses spoke with God face to face, and I've explained that. But basically, what he does, since I'm in his power, he just turns me, you know, or you know, just directs my head. And and there's a reason for this, which I just learned yesterday. It's, it's for me to, to feel more like a person uh, or to, to continue to be Keith because it's what it's like. It's just like I'm talking to an invisible man, you know, and it's just it's me and him. We're right here. But the truth of it is they're like clouds. This spirit let upon me and entered me as it did Ezekiel, and God is in his spirit, a concept unknown to Judaism, and yet the scripture backs every word I just said up many times. And, and that's how, and so 
they're really all around me and within me. Again, if if we if I was in a room talking to who's ever watching this video, God would fill that room, the Spirit would fill that room, like clouds, like two clouds. And they would be all around your body. They'd be encircling you. You'd be in their presence. With me, they flow through me. It's, it goes through my body. In other words, they're, they're connect, my spirit is connected just as the spirit is connected to God's presence. My spirit is connected to his, uh, the Holy Spirit and to God. Now, that's not a trinity. It's three persons in one inside this body. But, you know, Okay, so anyway, they, uh, they, they control everything I do and say. Now, heaven. Uh, they want me to cut it short because uh, I can hear my mom and dad talking. They're old, 93 and 86, and she's had strokes, and they can get angry at each other. <laughs> you don't want that hurt. But anyway... Uh, and it's been long enough. So the main thing is the offering of an additional proof. And I, see, I don't know how hard this is to believe. I know when you read some guy saying uh, he's Moshe, and because they're already out there, they commented on these videos here and there. And I immediately, I'm just like, well, there's a crazy person. That can't be. But you go to their sites, and there's nothing to back up their statement. There's nothing there. By and large, you go to my channel on YouTube, and I'll take all the subscribers I can get. I, I enjoy knowing that people are reading these things. It takes me one more step closer to getting to Jerusalem, and God says He's going to really, at that point in time, I don't have to go to so much with Him as I do these days. Uh, I, I mean, it's just every year has been more intense, more painful, emotionally and physically. Again, oh, okay, well, this is what they want me to, to, to get out. Your, your, your thoughts and everything, that's, that's not your brain. That's not your brain. What your brain is, is chemicals, a little electricity, and different kinds of matter. You know, there's gray matter and this and that. Spirit, your spirit literally reads that little electrical impulse these synapses, these, this and that, that and this, and knows what it means. And that's your thinking. Your thinking comes from your spirit. And that's why in heaven you can still be you. Because your brain doesn't go with you. You don't have your brain in heaven. And that's why they have taught me this way. Plus, it, it's easier for me to go... You know, more and more I'm getting to, nothing's bothering me. Now, he can do that with my emotions without putting me through all this, but he doesn't. He says, I like doing it in the real and using as little of my power as possible on you. But it, all it takes to make sure if we get this done, we get it done big, and we get it done right. And, this thing, and, and we've been going over this just this week. Uh, you know, Keith, I am God. Because I'm like, yeah, if they die, see, we, most of the living expenses here are from Social Security. The house is paid for, you know, and God took me from the world. I had to, That's in Isaiah 53. He was taken from the land of the living. Well, he's also given the wrong life. So what happened? He took him from society. He made me terminate my law license two weeks after he spoke to me. Uh, yeah, so and I had not worked since he talked to me. I hadn't worked at all in 13 years, and I started getting Social Security uh, when I turned 63. I'm still 63, early Social Security. But I give the checks to my dad to pay for him carrying me for 12 years. And plus, we were getting where we couldn't make it even with groceries for the month. But I'm like, you know, if they die, and he, God will say, Keith, I know when the guy die. And I can, if I had to, keep them alive. But I want to. That's not the way I do. Do you see what I'm talking about? I like to see. <laughs> I 
have. I've mentioned it so often, I, you can only put a half hour uh, at a time on my camera. And uh, it stopped abruptly. Oh, I don't remember exactly where I was or what I was talking about. <clears throat> uh, God has told me, the Holy Spirit is always up here. God pretty much speaks within me. It's as though, oh, I didn't finish the face-to-face. -face. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's like I'm talking to a person. Uh, and that, uh, and it's the same with the Holy Spirit. He's a person, you know. And God will just, you know, but but they're really just all around me. They can either speak within me to my mind, or they make it can seem as though it's coming from a person, and we're having a verbal conversation. Now, often I will talk, but they can't talk. They don't have mouths and vocal cords and a tongue uh, and and air and everything else. You know, but they can make it seem as though this is where it's coming from. It's still to my mind. And uh, in heaven, which I'll get to, it's in the books, uh, everything's Judaism. And see, this is one of the ways, as Elijah, I recounsel families and bring and draw them. And to do that is to draw them back to Judaism. Get back to synagogue. You've been given a clean slate. Sin no more. And you don't want to miss it. I've been there in vision too many times. It's too incredible. You know, you, you're a totally different being. You don't have a human body. And you'll have absolute knowledge. You, you'll have the knowledge you have here on earth of Judaism, of Jews, of the Tanakh, of the, of, of, uh, of the Torah, the Talmud. Anything Jewish, you want to learn about it. You want, and see, that's going to help me draw, particularly the young people. You know, it, it drops off and gets lesser and lesser all the time. And, um, and, and there's other things that, you know, first of all, I don't have to go around saying repent. Okay? I can go, I just need to tell people, you're sinless right now. And be sure to tell every Christian you see. I'm, because Moshiach is here, Christian. And I'm sin free, according to Jeremiah, the covenant with God that he has delivered. Now, see, that's how I talk. Yeah, and, and, and never do that. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not saying go and get in fights with them. But he, you know, we're his servants, Jewish people. I'm the righteous servant. I'm a Gentile. But that's today. I mean, I'm, you know, and so is Elijah. You know, what I like to say, uh, the God of the Jewish people and one Gentile. Just for them to hear. You probably hear me say that. I don't know when I'll ever actually convert. That's up to God. You know, I, I just know um, that I'm not going outside of that. <laughs> and that can change. But God wants to get this video out. So, um, You wanted me to get the face, and I stopped so abruptly, but, but that's the face-to-face -face part. You know, they just direct you, and it's part of just, uh, you know, I, sometimes I call it, I say, well, y'all are extraterrestrial, <laughs> celestial beings. And uh, they say, what do you mean we're extraterrestrial? I said, well, what? You, you, you don't live down here. And they say, you ain't even know that's true. So, you know, there's so much fun to be around. And, but, you know, I'm sure when they're just by themselves, they, you know, they, there's probably a lot of humor. But, you know, it's like they've been married a billion years for those who've been married or a long relationship. You know, after a while, you know, it's really don't feel like laughing together. But uh, they're having a great time. And God likes them. He likes operating human beings. And that's where, you know, we got other terms. And, you know, if you saw the glossary of the words and things spoken in here, you just shake your head and say, yeah, I know he's crazy. He's just crazy. <laughs> God would never, they could, you know, but it makes me comfortable. And that's what it's all about. So I don't know if the personalities I get from them are really true to their actual character. Because... Uh, but at the same time, I tell them, well, as far as I'm concerned, that's who you are. That's how you present yourself. I said, that can be true of any human. They can present themselves to you in some form or manner. And, and really, they're not that person at all. It's all fake. 
Uh, but but you still, that's who, you know, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, and it's, you're going to have a better experience in heaven the more you know. Because it's just about Judaism. And I want the Christians to hear that. I mean, believe me, when he says vindication or revenge, just think of the history of the Jews. There's no way, there's no way, and, and Germany was, is a Christian country, by the way, if anybody has forgotten, um, these false worshippers of a pagan god that they claim was God's human son, or God was him, born in the flesh. This and that, and God made a human sacrifice, and God accepts the human sacrifice that he makes. And none of them makes sense. But um, but he he's gonna have me out there loud and clear, and I think I think he's shown how I can be, uh, and he wants them to hear that, and he wants um, well okay, want me to stop there. What else? Oh, we're gonna be doing more videos like this. Now I've been flipping, you know, like I said, I only got about forty videos, but you can find about two hundred and five out there because we flip them. Because, you know, I don't get that many views. Uh, you can all see that when you look at it. Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm searching out a very small group. I went from getting about 65% of the views came from um, the United States. And then it was 55%. <laughs> and in the last seven days, it has dropped to 18%. In other words... Christians won't turn on any of my videos. They see me or the motorcycles, which was God's idea, by the way. I was kind of like, you know, these are religious people. I don't know if you should have me putting a, a, a motorbike on it all. But, but the Spirit will tell me, he said, no, he, you know, you think he likes walking around with you and being at eye level with everybody and associating with people uh, that we do bump into, which for the most part is homeless people. Um, you know, I'm basically homeless, but I got a home. If that makes any sense. He likes he, he likes to get me on a motorcycle. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what that means. I don't know if anybody could ever understand. He likes to swim. And the Holy Spirit likes to watch movies. You know, I'll tell him sometimes, you know, you got to stop talking. I, can't, I don't know what, I'm losing track of the plot. <laughs> and then he'll make me start laughing. He's, you know, he's just, that. That's just part of his character. God knew this is how I'm going to talk to mankind. And that's how he talks to his prophets. This happened to every prophet. What's going on with me? They were all men and divine beings. You know, and I see these rabbis and, you know, this stumbling block I've had with, with the teachings of Tobia Singer and Jews for Judaism that Isaiah 53 it is not God's prophet for the day of the Lord. It's the people of Israel. They're the righteous servant. But as I've shown over and over in the videos and in the books, that's not, you know, it's about, it, it, it's no different than saying it's Jesus. It's just like a union in another world. And I don't care if he had good intentions. It was a way to steer it away from, from Jesus. But no, what you should do is stick with your sages, especially Michael Sobek. Our sages say, right. How come you changed up on this one? Oh, is it because Rashi did? Well, you better double check that. You better check what he says in Zechariah 1. And there's a video on it. He says, I, we, we can't figure out chapter 1. Uh, we're going to have to wait for the teacher of, of, <laughs> of righteousness. That always comes on. <laughs> it's Raku. It's one of these new kind of televisions. But... Uh, but, but the market is small. You know, Jews are 2% of the planet. Of those, only about 30% considered them observant Jews from the last survey I saw. So you get into a small, and, and then many, many, many of them don't have anything to do with computers. So the market is small. Um, then I'm trying... Okay. 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 So, um, 
Right. We're going to be doing more of these type of videos because the material from uh, the prophets, we, we've covered everything. There's nothing not covered. Um, you know, I can also tell people go and look at the books that are referenced in uh, all these videos in the details. It should be, you know, if you, if you don't have time, somebody says, oh my gosh, this is just too much, you know, that's, that's too many videos, too many things. Again, it's really only 40. They just get a new picture and a new title, and there might be some cleaning of them up. You say, well, if God's telling you what to write, why would you have to, you know, do some editing and proofing and correcting? Because I got to still be a person. I'm still key. And I was the worst proofer and corrector in the history of oil, gas, and mineral law attorneys who write title opinions. I miss stuff every time. So I still do. But, uh, so I'm going to end this here, and uh, I don't know when we'll do the next one. I had no idea we were going to do this today. You know, they just started talking about it, and, they, and he's been irritating the fire out of me for days now. Uh, sleep deprivation. <laughs> just so much. I mean, they don't want me to get too detailed, but it is one hell of a process, to say the least. Uh, by the way, oftentimes, actually... Uh, the Holy Spirit has a prop. It's not a real angel, but we have another angel in here with us. Uh, we consider him uh, half angel, half human, and the Holy Spirit as a child. It's real funny, but uh, it's, it's awful, as painful as it is most of the time, you have an awful lot of fun in here. An awful lot of fun. And I don't even have to leave. Uh, but I know I'm going to. You know, I'm going to get back in the world. It's been 13 years. It's just me, God, and the Spirit, my elderly parents, and my sister's here too, but we don't talk. I mean, we're cordial, but, you know, we, we don't sit around and play backgammon or anything. So, that wraps it up. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this.